Hello and welcome to this tutorial video and thank you for downloading my free Filmic Log V2 iPhone video transform lab for use with Film Convert Nitrate. Of course, maybe you're just curious to find out how this works and that's fine too. In this video I'll show you how to use the LUT in DaVinci Resolve with the Film Convert Nitrate plugin. I'll also compare the results with just using the Filmic D-Log LUT and also just using Film Convert Nitrate without my transform LUT first. Finally, I'll compare the results with some real Kodak Vision 3 250D example clips so you can see how the color and tonality match up. Even if you don't like or use my LUT, Film Convert is a must-have film emulation plugin and it works with a wide variety of cameras including iPhone video directly, so it's well worth the purchase price anyway if film emulation is your goal. Let's get started. Firstly, this workflow has a few requirements. My LUT by itself won't do you any good. You'll need a PC or Mac which meets the minimum system requirements to run DaVinci Resolve, or any other NLE which Film Convert make a plugin for. So that covers Adobe, Final Cut Pro, Resolve and Avid. I'm going to show you how to use the LUT in Resolve only, and I haven't tested it in other NLEs, but it should work the same way as long as you can apply the LUT before Film Convert. You'll need to install Film Convert as I've mentioned. You'll also need to download and install the ARRI camera pack for Film Convert. The links for all of this are in the video description, or on the how-to page on my website. You'll need my LUT, of course, which you can download from my web shop for free. Finally, you'll need video files you've recorded using Filmic Pro on an iPhone in Filmic Log V2, which is part of the Cinematographer Kit. The Cinematographer Kit is an in-app purchase within Filmic Pro. How you record your video files is very important. Follow these tips. Shoot at minimum ISO to ensure clean, noise-free video. Set and lock your white balance using the built-in daylight white balance preset. Expose your image well, avoid clipping highlights, and lock your exposure before recording. Record at maximum bitrate. This is called Filmic Extreme. You can access this in the settings menu under resolution. I recommend you use an ND filter or variable ND filter when shooting in bright conditions in order to keep a low shutter speed for more natural looking motion blur. So let's get into DaVinci Resolve. I'm currently using the public beta of version 17, but by the time many of you are watching this, uh, it may well be out of beta. So. I'm going to open a project that I've already created. And this project contains um, a whole lot of Filmic Log V2 clips. Um, some have been recorded with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Um, some have been recorded with the 10s Max. And some of these clips you'll recognize if you've watched some of my videos already, um, like this, these clips from Istanbul, a video I recently uploaded, um, and these from Dubai as well, which I uploaded earlier in the year. Um, and then I've got some clips here that were shot in Amsterdam last year with the 10S Max, um, and then also some shot in Worthing in the UK. This is also actually from a video that uh, I already finished and is online. Um, and then I've got a couple of timelines. They're identical timelines. They just have all of these clips on them in no particular edited order. Just that one, this timeline, everything's graded. This timeline uh, has no color correction on it at all. So we're going to load um, the timeline with no color correction since that's what I want to show you. So we're going to go to the color page. Everything we're going to do is going to be in the color page. And the first thing you'll want to do is install the LUT. So you'll come up to your LUT gallery in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And you'll click anywhere in these folders. It doesn't really matter. I'll click on the ACES folder and reveal and find it. Now this opens up your directory um, where Resolve keeps all of its LUTs. So we'll just create a new folder in here and call it rich LUTs. You can call it anything you want, but if you're putting my LUT in it, maybe you want to do that too. 
um, it's just to keep everything organized and I'll just drag and drop that LUT in there so close that close that now if I refresh oh you can see I've got Rich's LUTs uh, and there's my LUT in there the icon picture doesn't really mean anything but it's there so I'm going to go to one of my clips uh, it doesn't really matter let's choose this one for now um, and let's build this up and you'll see just how easy this is to use so I'm gonna right click create a new serial node and right click again on that new node that we just created go down to LUTs go down to rich LUTs and apply my new LUT uh, just for some housekeeping we can name that I'll call it rich LUT but that's not finished next step add serial node and we're gonna apply film convert so if you've installed film convert it'll show up in your effects library you can search uh, I'm gonna drop film convert on there still not doing anything but if you've installed the ARRI camera pack, which you'll need to install, you can come to choose camera profile. You'll go ARRI, Alexa, not Rec 709. You'll go Log C, apply, and voila, there you go. Um, it's really as simple as that. So the LUT's been created to emulate, kind of approximate um, ARRI Log C values from Filmic Log V2 uh, so that Film Convert can expect or be set to an ARRI Alexa Log C input and you'll come up with beautiful colors. So I'm going to name this node just for housekeeping again um, Film Convert and it's really as simple as that. That's it, it's done. Um, if we want to apply this to everything, we can. Uh, oh, I've already saved it here as a, um, I can delete that, I guess, just to show you, gallery still, so I can just right click, grab still, and that's now saved a, a, a still of this grade, um, of these nodes, uh, to my gallery, stills gallery, and I can come down here and select other clips, uh, even multiple clips, I can right click on that still, apply grade. Now all of these clips have that grade applied. So I'm actually going to go ahead and apply that same grade um, to absolutely everything on the timeline. I've got 174 clips here. Apply to, I'm going to apply it to everything. Um, and yeah, that was it. And now we're going to look at a few of these. So, normally before I developed this LUT, I would have to do all kinds of manual tweaks and corrections and all kinds of things, um, which was really time consuming. Um, but having kind of experimented with with this and created this LUT um, now as long as the clips have been recorded properly exposed avoiding highlight clipping um, daylight white balance using the daylight white balance preset in Filmic Pro um, at minimum ISO to avoid noise and everything locked down in camera, um, it pretty much looks beautiful, no matter what. So let's take a look though at a comparison of this with um, Film Convert, just using its built-in Apple um, Log V2 uh, input profile, and then also compared to just using Filmic's own um, D-Log. So let's choose, well, let's, let's go back and choose this one again. 
that we were looking at. Okay, so just to compare, I'm going to create new grade version. Add grade version. Color grading version is added. Now, uh, I'm going to delete my lot. Um, so here we can see Film Convert just with its default uh, settings. Let's go and go to Apple, iPhone, Filmic Log, Prolog. This is Film Convert using just the Apple iPhone Filmic Log uh, input profile. So you can see the difference there in colors and, and tonality. Um, let's also add a new version. And let's just, let's delete that node. We'll add a new node. And let's just apply the uh, filmic D log V2 lot. And that's how that looks, just with the filmic D log V2. Um, so yeah, let's kind of compare again. So this is my LUT with Film Convert with Ari Alexa Log C camera profile. This is Film Convert alone without my LUT with the Apple iPhone Filmic Pro Log camera input profile. This is just Filmic D Log V2. Uh, and again, that's, that's my transform LUT. Um, with Film Convert using the Arri Alexa Log C input. Um, and I also want to show you just some comparisons with um, some actual um, Kodak 5207 um, film stock. Okay, so here we've got some we've got some red brick, we've got some green leaves, we've got also, it's lit by sunlight. Um, so I'm going to come back through to, these are some samples um, that I've saved to, uh, to my uh, gallery stills um, of some example Kodak 5207250D, which is the same um, film stock we're emulating here. You can choose other film stocks. Um, film Convert has a whole bunch of them. Um, so, okay, so here's, here's a comparison clip with some red bricks, um, and you can kind of see here there's very similar tonality and, and color um, when it comes to kind of comparing the colors in these two shots. Um, let's look at something with some greens in it. This is comparing another um, still. You can see the greens are, you know, have quite a bit of yellow in them um, and are looking, oops, looking quite similar. Um, again, in terms of, of color and tone um, of the leaves. And yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'm not claiming at all that this is suddenly magically turning your iPhone into an Ari Alexa. That's not the point. Um, the point here is is about a a good looking film emulation, um, and I believe that this transform lot with film convert expecting an Ari Log C input um, does a much better job than either the plain um, filmic D Log lot or film convert's own iPhone input, uh, Apple iPhone input. And it's as simple as that. That's two nodes, basically. The LUT and Film Convert. And that's it. And as I mentioned, I think this should work in any other NLE. 
um, as long as you can place the LUT before the Film Convert plugin. And yeah, I'd love to see and hear about your experiences with it and how it works for you. So feel free to get in touch, leave some comments on my uh, how-to guide on my website, leave some comments here on YouTube, and let me know how it works for you. So that's it. As long as you've recorded your video according to the required settings, this is pretty much drag and drop as you've seen. Um, you can make further tweaks and adjustments to color temperature and tint in the plugin. You've got exposure, um, you've got temp, you've got tint here, you've got saturation, um, you've got the film settings themselves. Um, these are all different film emulations. Um, some are photographic films, uh, not motion picture films. Um, you've got control over grain, um, so we can go super 35 grain structure, grain strength, grain size, grain saturation, grain softness, um, all of these things you can play with. Uh, but yeah, for me, I love this look. It, it works on a wide variety of footage, um, a wide variety of conditions. And yeah, so thanks for watching. I hope you found it easy enough to follow. Uh, nothing was rocket science in here. Before you go, please subscribe to my channel and sign up for my email updates on my website. If you do decide to download the LUT from my web shop, you can also opt in to receive my email updates at checkout. This way you'll know if I've put up a newer or improved version in the future. Uh, this is a version 1 LUT. I'm going to continue working on it and improving it. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoy. See you next time.